when do I recommend somebody do steel on steel? My experience is steel on steel, for those of you who don't know, I, I was going to talk about this later on, and, and we will go into it in more detail. Steel on steel is basically like a fifth step. It's you getting together and you have spiritual commitment with each other to pull each other towards God. All right? Which means, for me, my experience is you need to have a relationship with God. And so until you've done inventory, you don't have a relationship with God. So I like to tell people that if you want to do steel on steel, finish your amends. Get through the ninth step and go do it. I've seen people that are almost done with their amends who are able to start steel on steel, although it's few and far between. Guys that are still carrying guilt and remorse of the harms and they haven't cleaned it up, their ego will use that and they'll get into steel on steel and next thing you know, it's three years later and they still haven't finished up the last three amends. Finish the amends and then jump into steel on steel and it's like doing a regular inventory on a regular basis. At least that's my experience. What's yours with that, Mark? Uh, it's, uh, it's the very same. Uh, as iron sharpens iron, so one man or one woman sharpens another. Um, I'll share a little bit about that right now, I guess. Why not? Um, when I got down to Kerrville, Texas in 90... One, ninety-two, I guess. Uh, and Chris can tell you this. Um, I guess I'd been down there about two years, and I got very, very clear that my self-delusion and sobriety had almost killed me. And I also got very clear that the idea of one man, say a sponsor, being able to help me with that uh, was placing a burden on someone that they I had no business placing. So, uh, you know, I was doing some 11-step reading uh, one night, and uh, I like to read Proverbs. I like stories, I, you know, and, and Proverbs is stories. But So I'm reading Proverbs, and Proverbs 27:17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And, uh, man, that, that, that wouldn't leave me. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to do something with that. So I got a hold of Chris and another gentleman I sponsor, uh, Dale, and another man, uh, uh, Dan, and... Uh, Trying to think of who else. It seemed to me there's one other one. Oh, yeah, the gentleman at that time who had some of the longest sobriety in that town, uh, who incidentally, after a period of time, left Steel on Steel because his ego could not handle it. He could not handle the considerations that he was posed by somebody who was much younger in sobriety than him. <laughs> and so uh, we had the first meeting, and uh, basically, uh, here's the format that we utilize. We like to open with some meditation. Um, today I have a two-page uh, form that I use, and uh, we use timers. One of the things that, that I've learned, again, I guess this is about simplicity, but um, I'm a bullet person, and uh, alcoholics, I, I can always tell when an alcoholic is, is going to justify selfishness because before they ever get to what it is they're going to tell me, they, they go through a 15-minute explanation laying out the nine-course dinner. And then they tell me what I'm going to eat, and I, that really makes me gun-shy. So in Steel on Steel, we use a timer, and you only get 10 minutes. And we start out, and, and, and currently what we do right now is I talk about, first of all, where am I exactly with the circle and triangle? How many meetings have I gone to? Right now I'm meeting every two weeks uh, with two men. How many meetings have I gone to in the last 14 days? In the last 14 days, this is back to discipline is the horse I ride. How many morning prayers did I do? How many morning meditations? How long were these meditations? Um, how many evening reviews did I do? Uh, am I doing a written evening review? How many evening meditations did I do? What was the length of those? Um, where are each of the people I sponsor in the steps? Uh, am I accountable as a sponsor? Am I accountable to someone? Specifically, what step am I on? Um, and then it goes on, once, once they're done asking questions about the strict disciplines of 10, 11, and 12, then it goes on to say, uh, are you having any problems in relationships, i.e., work, coworkers, AA, etc.? Uh, then it says, uh, what's going on in your significant other relationship? Uh, then it gets into money. Are you planning to spend any money over $200? We threw that in there right now because two of the uh, men that I'm doing this with have unfinished financial amends. So right now they both have everything they need. So if they are, they, I got them to agree that before they'll ever spend any sum of money over 200, they'll call 
the other two men and seek counsel because what that means is since they still owe amends, they would be once again stealing from these same people they've already stolen from once. And, and they're, you know, so that's in there. Are you planning any purchases over $200? Um, see, I can see some of you already going, who wants that kind of accountability, right? <laughs> um, in there is your physical health. What's going on with your physical health? Uh, and we talk about that. Uh, when I started Steel on Steel, uh, um, I weighed probably about 250 pounds. I had great medical insurance and I hadn't had a physical in probably 10 years. Um, I mean, it was unbelievable to us. And so we begin to ask these questions. And uh, I'm here to tell you as a result of Steel and Steel, I get yearly physicals every year, dermatologist. Uh, I take good care of myself in, in that area with the exception of smoking. Um, so the physical health piece is on there. What are you doing with that? Uh, then we like to work with the definition of honesty. Say what you do, do what you say. How you been doing with that? Say what you do, do what you say. See? And you take a look at that every area of your life. Are you getting to work on time, etc.? Uh, then the last question on the form that we use is, do you keep your word? And then we've got some little reminders. Use the word consider, uh, done in love, uh, that kind of stuff. Then what happens is... Um, uh, I shut the timer off, I pull out a notebook, and those two men, based on everything that I've shared, will ask me to consider some things, see? Uh, I'll give you an example um, of some of some of the uh, considerations. One that they gave me about a month ago is they wanted me to consider a lot less travel and a lot more involvement in AA where I live. So I write that down, consideration. And, of course, I'm sober much longer than both these guys, so I have to look at them and thank them. <laughs> because our agreement is you cannot defend because the ego wants to defend. Uh, what else did they ask me to uh, consider? Uh, they asked me to consider that maybe I was working uh, with too many people, that I was placing too much of a burden on myself with my, with my career and trying to work out and do this and do that and do that. So I'm writing these considerations down. Uh, when, when we're done with that, then what I did is for uh, the next two weeks, I took those considerations into prayer and meditation. And uh, I can tell you that I made some decisions off that. That very next week, I went to five meetings. See, steel and steel allows me to defeat my ego and use it to my benefit. If you all think I'm showing up at steel and steel with two guys with less sobriety and, and they're going to confront me again about not having enough meetings in my own hometown, you are wrong. <laughs> I'm going to go to that meeting even if I don't want to be there. See? That's how steel and steel can benefit. But I'll tell you off that already, uh, I did cancel a bunch of stuff. Uh, I can't, steel and steel is one of the most important practices I've ever had in my life. And I've had it pretty well consistently since about 1994. That kind of accountability, unbeknownst to me, where you got to understand if, if you do what I'm talking about, there isn't any secrets in your life, are there? And, and they're asking you to consider things. And really, over the years, what it did is uh, it opened, it just totally opened up my ego, if you will. But most alcoholics, when they hear about this format, they don't want anything to do with it because we lead secret lives. Financial, you know, you, you name it. And we don't, we don't want that kind of accountability. Uh, my self-delusion, my unwillingness to face that kind of accountability, I told you where it got me at 10 years. Uh, I love that kind of accountability. I love that kind of kind of discipline. Now understand something else. We do steal and steal uh, from an avenue of love. Now I'm not here to try and tell anyone what they have to do with their life. By virtue of self-delusion, meaning I fall asleep dreaming I'm awake, <laughs> steal and steal is about are you asleep to this? See? I was asleep to the idea that as you begin to get older in your life, it's probably a good idea to go get a yearly physical so that by the time you find out you have cancer, your whole body's not full of it. Just little simple things like that that I was asleep to, right? So that's what we do. Like we currently uh, meet uh, every uh, two weeks. Um, but as you can see, it covers every area of my life. Now, I, there's a strange thing about this. Uh, is surprisingly enough, the first half of this form that I like to use is all the things that we need to do is stay in fit spiritual condition, right? Now, strangely enough, 
uh, when I report, and I'm doing all those things, the second half of my life, which is the, I'm in the world to play the role that God has assigned, it seems very clue, clean and very smooth and very peaceful. Surprisingly enough, when the first half has a bunch of holes in it, like I only meditated two times last week, I went to one meeting, uh, I'm not sure what step I'm on, I'm not working with anyone, it is incredible what the bottom half looks like meaning your job and relationships and physical health. and So when, when I meet with, with the men that I work with, and, and I do that fairly religiously, they always bring that form with them. And they know me well enough. If they got a bunch of holes in the top half, I will not talk to them about the bottom half. Don't talk to me about your relationship with your girlfriend when you've been unwilling to do the disciplines of 10 to 11 for a week. Get out of my house. See? Get out of my house. I'm not going to talk about it. It's just dribble. It's a waste of time. See? Go on. Just get away from me. I don't want what you... Just get out of here. See? Because what's going to happen as a result of not doing the disciplines, then what have they taken into that area of their life? Their selfishness and their self-will. So what they're going to report back is, well, we had this big fight, this blow up. My employer's all pissed off and I haven't been feeling good physically and I'm lethargic and I go... Oh, let's see. No prayer, no meditation. Hey, dee, dee, dee. Gee, I wonder if there's any connection here, right? And and so, at any rate, uh, that's what steel and steel is. That's how I, that's how I use it. Um, I, again, I, I will tell you, it's one of the best disciplines I've ever brought into my life. Uh, it has helped me uh, beyond belief. I mean, I mean Mr. Chris, uh, who you'll hear tonight, uh, will tell you he he and I were involved in that for years and. Uh, you develop a closeness, a caring, a compassion. Um, uh, see, you know, Dave brought up something, and this is so important. Here's these people in his group watching him drift off into la-la land that he could drink behind and nobody's saying anything to him. You know, and, and Steel and Steel ultimately for me became a vehicle in which men that I cared about and loved about deeply uh, areas in which they would fall asleep, think they were dreaming, they were awake, I could bring that to their attention. I did that in the spirit of love. I didn't do it in the spirit of judgment. I didn't do it, you know, in, in anything else. So uh, that's a little bit about about steel on steel. Uh, I think uh, Dave, I think, brought some forms, uh, which are pretty similar to the ones I have and, and I use for it. Uh, I can tell you from my experience, if you get more than about four people, it's it's just about too many. It, it may may take too long, but... And I'll be happy to answer any other questions uh, about that um, uh, during the course of the weekend. And I guess we um, are just about ready to eat dinner. So then tonight, uh, you're going to get the Chris R. Show. Um, I guess we're going to break for a couple hours, if I understand that, and meet back here at 7. Okay. Mark, I got just one more thing to add to Steel on Steel since we're talking about it. Steel on Steel, when I first started it, I was getting, I, I, I chose three people to do it with. There's a magic of the number of four. I've done it in different size groups. There's a magic of four. Don't ask me what it is. It's just my experience. A three, oftentimes you'll get a consideration where you'll say this, they'll say, one guy will say, well, is it possible that you need to do this? And the other guy will say, is it possible that you need to do that? And they're diametrically opposed. So who's going to break the tie? If two guys are saying, is it possible over here, one guy's saying, is it possible over here, chances are you're hearing the voice of God and you kind of get an idea where you need to go. So there's a magic of the number of four. S second item, don't be surprised if you change. Do not attempt steel on steel if you don't want to change. Because remember, God's grace lasts only as long as ignorance. They will show it to you. We call them IIP questions. Everything's in the form of, is it possible? IIP, colon. Boom. Is it possible that you need to look at this? Is it possible that? You get an unlimited amount of time to report back to the group on the questions they gave you last time. Well, you asked me about this, and here's what I did. You asked me about that, and here's what I did. And then I asked the question, is there anything I didn't cover that you want to hear about from last time I shared? Then we hack the clock, and you got 10 minutes. The reason for the 10 minutes is absolutely critical, because in 10 minutes, your ego doesn't have the opportunity to set up the story so to make you look a certain way. you got to put the truth on the table, and you got to put it on the table right now. And the last thing is, Steel on Steel is about commitment. Don't come to my Steel on Steel group with the same problem month after month after month after month. It's about change, you know. Um, and there are no 
holds barred. Every door is open. We talk about sex, specifically, how is it going on in your life? We talk about the Internet. We talk about masturbation if it's going on. We talk about the dirty, nasty deeds that are going on. How's the hairy eyeball? You're going to be talking about that. Summertime, you're at the beach on vacation. Were you having a problem with that? You know, were you mentally undressing other women? What's going on in your life? We talk about every possible thing that can, co can come up on the table, and it's all open for discussion. When I first started my first Steel on Steel group, the wives of the guys that are in my Steel on Steel group were saying, wow, this is pretty cool. And all of a sudden, these guys started growing really fast, and it puts a lot of pressure inside a relationship. When you start doing what's right, because now you're holding up the spiritual mirror, right? And next thing you know, the wives are, I'm not sure if I want this to continue, some of them. Some of the other ones, my wife begs me for Steel on Steel because she sees the benefits. If I miss a Steel on Steel meeting, she's like, when's the next meeting? And she'll arrange her whole schedule to open up a hall. I'll cover the kids. you got Steel on Steel right here, okay? She's, abs she's a, a tremendous support for Steel on Steel. Changed my life. Try it. But you've got to want to change. All right? The forums are pretty specific. I give you, it's a whole meeting package. There's the reading that we intro with. There's a description of Steel on Steel, what Steel on Steel is about, what it's not about. Um, and then lastly, there's, a, uh, there's a, a reading that we do out of the big book, which is from page 62 forward. And it talks about why we're there and who, who the problem is and where do we get the power from. Something I just added to Steel on Steel. Um, all of us happen to be Christian in our Steel on Steel group. At the end of our Steel on Steel now, we started to break bread together. You want a powerful spiritual experience? If you have something like that that's part of your religion, do it together as a group. We openly pray together. We pray for each other. We have prayer lists that go on for each other, for the problems that are in each other's lives. It's, it's dramatic the way it's affected my life and the, things, the areas that it have changed. It's, I, I can't say enough good stuff about it. Now, it's not AA, but man, does it affect your AA. You want to really be, get sharp? It's like doing a fist step once a month. I happen to do it once a month because of schedules. I wish I could do it every two weeks. It just doesn't work in my life that way. Everybody that I chose for Steel on Steel in my group, we're all basically the same. We're all within about 10 years of each other age-wise. We're all married. We're all double-digit sobriety. We've all been going to couples meetings for a lot of years. I've been going to couples meetings in AA for over 15 years. Um, two of the three of us have kids. Excuse me, uh, three of, of the four of us have kids. One guy has since dropped out. So I'm now back in a situation where we have three of us in our steel and steel group. And as a group, we're trying to decide how we're going to handle that. Are we going to add somebody? What are we going to do? Right now, we're going with it and seeing how it goes. So it's, an, it's the ultimate challenge. You know? uh, my sponsor used to, matter of fact, my home group. I used to have, belong to this group that had an unwritten motto. You think you're working the program? Show us your family, and we'll tell you how well you're working the program. Steel on steel, we're really sharpening that up because you can't live in that state of disillusionment when you got three other guys pulling you towards God. That's what it's all about. In a spirit of love, pulling each other shoulder to shoulder. Nobody's the sponsor. Nobody's the sponsee. Nobody's the guru. Nobody's in charge except God. And that's what the deal's about. Let's go eat.